everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use graphite powder to create backgrounds for your graphite portraits. Now, I like to use graphite powder in pretty much every single one of my graphite projects because it works not only just for a really good base layer, but also for creating soft out of focus backgrounds. Now, as I've mentioned, this is what this tutorial is going to focus on. So for this portrait, I decided to use my oval shaped soft tool to apply my graphite powder to my paper. Now this here is my preference rather than the triangular or rectangle shape because those do have those um, harsher edges and the corners which can create harsh start and stop points. So my preference is either this oval or the round shape. Now as you can see here this is getting a really nice soft effect but it's because I'm building up my graphite powder in layers. Now when we work with our graphite pencils when drawing the subject that is also very important and the graphite powder for backgrounds or your base layer would be no different. So I do want to be making sure as always that I'm hinting at my lights and my darks. Now onto the first proper layer here you can see that I've pretty much got graphite powder all over my background. I'm now going to go in with a second layer and this here is just helping to get my contrast a little bit more accurate in my reference photo. Now again, I don't want to be using my darkest graphite powder early on. I am still really gradually increasing my values. This is going to be one of the best ways of achieving more depth. Now I'm also being fairly careful around my subject, but you'll notice that that graphite powder does go over the edge of my subject, this owl, by two or three millimetres. Now that's important because I don't want there to be a halo, a lighter edge around my subject where the graphite powder for the background has not gone all the way up to that animal. That's really important. So I'd always rather have that graphite powder overlapping that subject slightly, only just by a couple of millimetres, but just enough to make sure that that there is right up to that subject. Now once I was happy with the darkness that I've built up for the first two layers, I then started to work on definition on the outer focus branch. Now this here, this tutorial is available on my Patreon channel all in real time, so there are no sections sped up or cut out, and I've actually got a voiceover that I'm creating while I'm drawing, so there are no sections where I've you know rushed past anything, everything is explained in the moment. So if you would like to watch this tutorial, then I'll link my Patreon in the description below. Now in terms of the branch here, this is where I really wanted to focus on building up a little bit more depth with my harsher edges, but still maintaining more of the softness. So this is where a balance with blending and softening techniques overlap. The background was very blended. I wanted all of my values to be very gradual from dark to light. But with the branch, you can see that everything's soft, but I did want there to still be some real definition where some of the branches and main twigs would come off of that tree. Now this area around the head, in the portrait, this is what was visible in my layout that I created. I added it in. Once I did that, I felt, you know, that does not look right. It now looks like the owl's got certain things, I don't know what it is, like tentacles in a way, coming out from the top of his head. So I did not like that. And at the end of this video, I actually get rid of those and it's a very easy fix. Graphite powder is one of the more forgiving mediums when working with graphite. Now, if I'd have used graphite pencils for my background here, I would have had a bit of a harder time lifting up that or covering over those branches in around the head that I do not like. So this here is another reason why graphite powder works so well. Now when I work with graphite powder, it's never with the aim of getting my values really dark because I do find that graphite powder, you're not able to get as dark as what you can achieve with the graphite pencils. So it's a really good foundation for mapping in your lights and darks and potentially you may need a lighter background so you won't have to go back in with your graphite pencils like what I'm doing now. But I did want around the owl, the center of this background to be a little bit darker. So this is why I'm now applying my softer, something like a 6B graphite pencil over the background and then softening that into my graphite powder using that same oval soft tool. Now this technique works really well, but you do wanna be making sure that you're not scribbling on your background. You wanna use light pressure with your graphite pencils and that's gonna to help to avoid any harsh start and stop points with that pencil. The last thing I want is for the background to have those pencil marks because all of this should look like it's out of focus. So here on the top section of the head, I'm still trying to make these little twigs work 
and it's not until I completed more of this that I felt, you know, I'm not happy with that at all. Now in my Patreon tutorials, if I do end up creating something where, whether or not it's a mistake or just something that, you know what, well, on the computer it looked fine, but on the paper it just doesn't have the right balance, it's drawing my eye to that one section rather than the owl itself, it's a little bit distracting, then I will show in my tutorials how to fix that. I do not cut anything out, there are no secrets. So that's why another reason I like adding the voiceovers to my tutorials while I'm drawing because I can explain all of those decisions in the moment. Now learning from mistakes or things that we want to change is all information that we have gained that we can put towards the next portrait. So it's one of the best ways of learning and improving our drawing skills. And this is where I decided, you know, I prefer this with the softer effects, so the darker centre and lighter edges. And the wonderful thing with working with graphite powder in this way is just how forgiving it is. You can see here it covers up beautifully. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If you've got any questions about using graphite powder, then feel free to pop them in the comments below. But I'm more than happy to help if I can. And if you would like to draw along to this Tawny Owl tutorial, then it is all available on my Patreon now. You get the reference photo, liner and full material list. I do upload two to three videos to YouTube every week, so if you'd like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'm going to be uploading another video here to YouTube in the next few days.